Hello, in this video, you're going to learn how to create a wall jumping and sliding system inside of Unreal Engine. To get started, we're first going to create a new trace channel. This channel will allow us to identify objects that the player can wall jump on. To create a new trace channel, we can go over to Edit, Project Settings, then go over to Collision, and go to Trace Channels, and select New Trace Channel. Just call this Wall Jump and set the default response to be ignore. Then go accept. The next thing we're gonna do is create some walls that the player can jump on. So if I go here where it says quickly add things to the project and I'll just go shapes and select a cube. Then we just wanna scale this cube so it kinda of looks like a wall. So I'm gonna just go here. You can also just press R on your keyboard to um, scale an object that you selected. Okay, so once you've kinda of made your wall, Go over to details, scroll down or up and you want to find collision and change the collision presets to be custom. Then scroll down and just make it so this wall has the um, block channel for wall jump. Then we just want to create another wall. To quickly do this we can just select this um, cube and hold alt on your keyboard and that will allow you to quickly create a duplicate. So the next thing we're going to do is code our wall jump system so the player character can wall jump. If we open them up and find some free space and we just want to right click and look for event tick. So event tick, we're going to check to see if our player character is falling. If our player character is falling and they're next to our wall, we will allow them to wall jump. So to check if our player character is falling, we can drag in the character movement and we just want to drag up here and look for is falling. Then we just want to drag off return value and look for a branch. Another quick way to make a branch is to just hold B in your keyboard and left click. So event tick, if our player character is falling, we're gonna check to see if they are next to a wall. So drag off true and look for line trace by channel. Where this is gonna start, we can drag in the capsule component. We just wanna drag off here and look for get world location. Where this will end, we're going to end it a couple units in front of our um, capsule component. So we can just drag off here and look for get forward vector. Then we just want to drag off here and look for multiply. And then we just want to right click on this second value and change this to be a float. And just right click on this and promote it to a variable and call it wall check distance. Compile this and just make the default distance 50 for now. We then just want to drag off this get world location and look for add and connect this into here and then this into end. Then for the trace channel, change this to be um, wall jump and for the draw debug, change this to be four generation. So this is going to do a line trace to check to see if we are hitting a wall that the player can jump on. Then we just want to drag off this return value and look for branch. If this is true, that means my player character is on a wall that they can jump on. So we just want to create a new variable and call it wall jump question mark. And if this is true, we can drag in wall jump and just set it and just make sure that this is checked. If this is false, then we can just copy this and connect false into here and make sure that this is unchecked. If my player character is ever on a wall, then we kind of want to make their velocity slow down so it's a bit easier to wall jump. So to do this, we can drag in our character movement, drag off here and look for get velocity. Then we just want to drag off here and look for v interp to constant. And we're basically going to get our character's velocity and slowly make them move towards a velocity of zero, which will make them slow down. For the delta time, just right click and look for get world delta seconds and connect this into here. And for the interp speed, depending on what you put here, we'll make it so it will depend how fast the player slows down. So if you make this something like 3000, then the player will slow down quite fast. Next, we just want to drag off our character movement again and look for select velocity and connect this into here and then this into here. And then if our player character is not falling, we just want to make sure that the wall jump is not true. So connect from false into here. 
Okay, so now if I go compile and I go play, if I jump on the wall, then my player character should start to slow down and that is working correctly. And then if I get off the wall, we can see I can move again. I may have made that value a bit too high, so you may want to play around with this. Let's just make this a thousand and see how it is. So a thousand is a bit better. Okay, nice. The next thing we're going to do is make it so when the player character is falling on a wall, if they jump, they kind of um, are launched in the opposite direction and they can continue their wall jump. So to do this, head over to our player character's jumping bit. So when the player presses the jump button, they jump. But if we're on a wall, then we want to kind of make this a bit different. So if we drag off started and look for a branch, and the condition of this branch is going to be wall jump, if we are not on a wall, then we can just continue our normal jump. However, if we are on a wall, then we just want to right click and look for get actor forward vector. And then we just want to drag off here and look for multiply. And then we just want to right click here and change this to be a um, float again. Then right click on this and permit it to a variable and call it wall jump force compile this and very important make sure that this value is negative i found a value of around negative 650 works pretty well so we're going to launch our character in the opposite direction so that's why this needs to be negative then we just want to right click and look for launch character when we launch our character we also want to launch them in the z-axis so they move up a bit so we also just want to drag off here and look for add vector Sorry, we just want to look for add. And is this one, operators add, and then in the Z, let's just give it a value of 1000. We can change this later if we need to. And then just connect this into launch velocity. Then also just check X, Y override and Z override. This will just make it so our character will have these specific settings when we launch the character. We can then connect from true into here and I'm just going to select everything and move it down as I kind of need a bit more space. And then one more thing, when we launch our character, we also want to make them rotate so that they're facing the wall that they've now launched towards. So to do this, we can just drag off here and look for set actor rotation. And then we just want to right click on this new rotation value and look for split structure pin. Then we can just right click and look for get actor rotation. Right click on this and look for split structure pin and connect X into X and Y into Y. Then we just want to drag off Z and look for add. And we want this one and then add 180 and connect this into Z here. Then go compile. So now if I go play and I jump on this wall, then I press spacebar. I'm not in the opposite direction. So I can either move my wall closer or I can increase the um, wall jump force. So the larger I make this, the more my player is going to be moved in the opposite direction. So I've just made it minus a thousand now. So I go play, we can see it launched me and then I was facing the opposite direction and then I can jump on this wall. Nice. The next thing we're going to go over is how to add some animations so our player character plays an animation when they are sliding on a wall. So to do this somewhere in the description of this video, I'm going to include a link to some animations that you can download. I'm just going to go over to my characters folder, mannequins, animations, Lenny, and then I'm going to import the animation here. So it will be called third person wall slide, just drag and import it into this folder. And for the Scanton, make sure to select the SK Mannequin, then just go Import. Next, we want to head over to our character's animation blueprint. So we go to the Mannequin's animation folder and open up ABP Manny. And then we just want to go over to the event graph and add a pin here. And we just want to Right click and look for get player pawn, drag off here and cast to the BP third person character as the third person character uses this animation blueprint. Then we just want to drag off here and look for get wall jump 
and then right click and promote to a variable and just create a wall jump variable inside of our character's animation blueprint and just connect this into here and from then 3 into here then we can just compile this then we want to head over to our animation graph and go over to the locomotion sorry we want to head over to the um, main states where we have the jumping and then we just want to look for our wall slide um, animation just drag it in there somewhere and we want to connect from jump to here and from for a loop to here so if our character is jumping or if they're ever falling and they happen to be on a wall that they can slide on we'll make them play their wall slide animation so for um, both of these states head inside here and drag in the wall jump variable connect it into here and here then if our player character ever stops sliding on a wall we want them to um, return to their normal animation so just connect from here into land and then for this whoops so I clicked the wrong one let me just move it so it's a bit easier to see then for this transition to transition from our wall slide back to our normal animation head inside here drag in the wall jump variable drag off here and look for not boolean and then connect this into here then if I go compile when my player is on a wall they should now play their own wall sliding animation so let's test this out if I go play when I'm on a wall you can see my player was playing their wall sliding animation so now if I go play when my player is sliding on a wall they play their wall sliding animation and then you may want to um, remove the um, debug so to do that we can just go back here and change the for duration to be none and then this is our wall jumping system done so what we can do is just select everything right click and then go to collapse to function and I'm just going to call this handle wall jump then to polish this up we can add some particle effects which will appear whenever our character is sliding on the wall so in my content folder I'm just going to right click and create a new folder and just call this fx then again somewhere in the description of this video I'm going to attach this smoke particle just drag it somewhere into this fx folder then we just want to right click and go Niagara system and we want to go new system from selected emitter go next and we want to select the simple sprite burst and just add this go finish and we can call this smoke um, fx then if we open it up oh sorry we actually want to create a material for our um, smoke texture so if we just right click on this and go create material open this up and then we just want to go to blend mode and make this translucent and we also just want to change the shading model to be unlit and then we can just right click and break the link here and we just want to right click and look for particle color and then we're going to look for multiply node we can also just press M and then left click to create two multiply nodes and for this first one we want to connect this A value into B this RGBA value into A and connect this into the opacity then for the emissive color we want to connect from RGB into here and from RGB into here and then connect this into emissive color and we can also just select this and change it to be a plane so it's a bit easier to see okay once we've created this just go apply and save then go back to the smoke effects and we just want to select this material and change it to be the smoke material that we just made and then we just want to go to initial particle and give this a lifetime of 0.5 and then I also just um, made this 0.5 seconds and there are other settings you can change in here if you want but this is all I did then we can go save go back to our blueprints to the third person character and to the handle wall jump and we just want to drag off this R hit result and look for a break hit result 
then we just want to drag off here and look for spawn system at location and the system is going to be the smoke fx and the location we just want to drag the impact point of where our line trace is hitting and connect this into location and for the scale you may want to change this so let's just make it three by three by three for now then go compile and if i go play we can see there are some smoke particle effects when i'm sliding um, it's a bit off so depending on the size of your character you may need to adjust this but what we can do is just double click and add a reroute node drag off here and look for add and let me just add 40 to the z so it kind of looks like the smoke is spawning where my player's hand is okay so that's a bit better so that's all for this video and don't forget you can get the project files somewhere in the description of this video if you enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one bye